So we're at this point where this website's pretty much done. We have our main page here, we have our blog, we have our pricing page, our contact, and our FAQ. Now, there's a couple of small style things that we could just clean up here. So for instance, if you come down here and you look at these links, these are unstyled. So these on the website previously had a little bit of an animation or a CSS transition to them. When I look on the Hugo website here, they don't seem to have that anymore. I'm not sure what changed. A couple of things in this theme have changed over time. So we could go back and we could look at a previous version of this if we really wanted to get it right. Or we could just kind of make our own style here to animate this if we want. And we could get rid of the underline if we want to get rid of that. Then down here at the bottom, you'll notice that our footer has some like regular looking links here. And down here in the footer of the example site, they look a little different. They have that fade in of the green color and the gray when you're not hovering over them. The icons down here for the social media platforms, they seem to be a little strange as well. So we could model this style and just make sure that we're actually pulling in the icons here from this icon pack. And that should work like that. And then the last thing I see over here is on the blog page, we have our footer or our pager right here rather. And that pager needs to be styled a little bit. So we can go and do that real quick and then we can just call this a finished up theme. And you know, of course there are improvements we can make over time. So if people want to flag things to us, we'll take a look. Or if you want to make PRs to this theme yourself, feel free to do that. Let me just go back to my text editor here. Let me just save the changes I've made. Let's see what the last changes we've made are. So if we look at the unstaged changes, we see that we made some changes to the pricing page. And if you come down here and you look at some of this, you can see the content that we added. You can see the template updates we've done. So yeah, let's just save this. And we'll say git add, give a message, we'll say pricing page updates. And we'll save that. And we can push that to our repository. And let's come back here and let's finish this up. So I'm going to come and let's maybe take a look at the home page one more time. Let's take a look at these footer links. I think this would be a good starting point. So I'm going to inspect the element on this. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take a look on our example site and I'll inspect the elements here. So we have this footer list A here and it has this gray color and some of this information. So let me just grab this here and let me just copy this and put this over in our footer component. So we have in our global, we have a footer.spelt and we don't have any styles attached here yet, it doesn't look like. So we could come down here to the bottom of the footer and we could add a style block. And in here we could just paste this footer information in and this will be scoped to this specific component but we're using the component across the site so it'll be scoped every time. Let's take a look back over here and let's reload our page. So now if we come down to the bottom, you'll see we have similar style footer. Now we wanna get that hover behavior as well so when we hover here we're getting that text underline. We actually don't want that, we want to fade in with the green color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at one of these links specifically like that and then I'm going to press hover and I'm going to add the hover style to it. So now we can see this information here. So it looks like we're getting this hover here. So I can grab this and let's copy that style and put it in our footer style sheet as well. And let's save that. And we might want to do something where we get rid of the text decoration. So this doesn't have any text decoration. We can do something like that. But let's just see how this looks. So we have that style. We're still getting the underline and we're not getting a transition in. So let's take a look back over here. So we have this style right here that says text decoration none. So we don't want it on the hover or the focus. So we can copy that in as well. Yeah, we could put that down here. And that looks like it's a global style, actually. So if you see that, we never have any underlying links in across the whole site. So we can actually put this globally. It would have been nice to do this a little earlier, but we can do it now. That's not a big deal. So if I save that, and I come back to our global styles here. And we can look and see if we have links anywhere here. So we have anchor tags, looking through. Doesn't look like we've done any global anchor tag style here. So this will be our first one, that's okay. We'll do global, and then in here, we'll paste the style, and let's just make sure we formatted this correctly. The global parenthesis has to end here, and if we save that, that should happen globally, but it should propagate to this section as well. So that looks like it worked. Come down here, 
so we no longer have those underlines here. Now, we want some kind of transition in for these, so let's take a look back over here and see if we can find where that's happening. So we have this anchor, has this marker section, and let's see here. Scroll down, okay, so we have the anchor and the button select. So this is another thing, I think we've done this a couple different times where we actually copy this. This should probably be a global style as well. So I can grab this and let's put it back in here as a global style. Now we would get rid of it from all the places where we specifically added it. So if we wanna go back and find those, we can try to remove those because it's redundant if we do it globally like this. And let me make sure I have the syntax right. And we'll save that. So now we have that anchor tag in the buttons and the selects easing in and out globally. So let's come back and see if that applies here. Okay. So we're back on the home page in the footer. Okay, so now that eases in and out. That looks pretty good. And yeah, we could go through, we could start looking for this globally. So we could do something like grep searching our code base. So we could look through all our files here and look for something like pointer, because that's pretty specific. And we probably don't want our node modules folder. So let's just ex exclude a directory called node modules. And let's expand this so we can see what's going on here. So we have, we don't really need our public information either. That's our built site, so we don't need that. But we have it in our blog, we have it in our contact form, and we have it in our global. So we can probably remove it from this blog page. Came down here. So we have it in this section here. This is the exact style that we just pasted. So let's just make sure we take a look at what's going on there. So if we go over here on our site, we go to our blog page. And we look at the buttons, you can see that they, they kind of change like this. So that's probably what's happening here. So we can remove this. And if it's working still, if I save this, that button style should still work even when we reload this page. So I'm gonna reload that. Okay, the button style still seems fine. So it doesn't seem like we lost anything because we have it applied globally. So I think that's okay there. And then the other one here, we have it in our contact form. So let's go over here and look at our contact form. And you can see that we have added this somewhere possibly. Contact form, pointer. Okay, so this is different. This is a, a different style. So we're not gonna mess with this right now. Okay, so I think we're in pretty good shape there with that. And let's take a look at this footer here. So I'm gonna inspect the style. And actually, yeah, let's do that. Come over here to our blog. And I gotta kill the JavaScript because this site is loading really slow. And let's just look at the styles for this one more time. So we have this whole footer here. It appears in this column. Let's take a look at our footer. And we are in our blog now, so we wanna to go to the blog page. And we have this pagination inside the 12 columns. So let's take a look at our 12 columns pagination. Okay, then we have pagination here, and we have pagination here. And you can see we have some things here. So we have Justify Content Center. We have Margin Top. So we want to copy those over. We copy those. And actually, see over here, we're actually using a pagination component. So go up to our components and go to pagination.svelte. Down here at the bottom, we don't have a style declaration yet. Let's add style. And let's scope this style directly to this component, just like this. So we have the pagination center. Then we have some other styles here. So displace flex and the padding left is zero, list style none. So all those things are coming in, although we seem like we have some of that stuff going already. Then we have border radius. So let's just come in here. Let's save this for now. Let's go and reload our style here. So we at least have it in the center now. Maybe we want to look at these individual pager items. So these LIs and maybe these anchor tags. 
So we have these links here. Now, this is probably the style we really want. So let's grab some of this information here. And let's add this override like this. And let's do the same for this block here. And let's even grab, looks like we have some first taught child information here and we even have some relative styles here. Let's first, let's see where we're at here before we go adding too much style. And we'll come back over here, we'll reload this. Okay, so this is getting pretty good. It looks really similar to what we had there. We don't have any of the active class information yet, so that would be something that we would have to do, so we can investigate that. So we do have an active class here, right? So this knows that we're on the first page. Now, what we have to do is we'd actually have to come here and style the active class. So what we could do is we could take a look at what it's doing. So inspect that. So this is where that color comes in. So we could do something like this. And we could add this information, save it, come back over. Okay. See what happens when we go to the second page. Does it actually switch? The active class switches. Third page, active class switches. Can't click these. We can go back to the first or we can go to the second. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. And let's just take a look over here. So we're on the first, it looks the same. Like the grayed out link is not that obvious in these. So that's fine. It's kind of the same thing we're doing here. It's not very obvious, but that's okay. We actually do want to hover behavior as well, it looks like. So as I hover over these, you can see a little bit of a highlight. So let's just take a look at that. I'm gonna inspect this specific one here again, and I will hover this so I can see that. And then I'll just grab this style and I'll copy and paste that over here. And let me save that. And let me come back over here to our website and reload this. I come down. Okay, so now you can see that you can go to either end here. And when I hover over these, you actually no longer get the hover behavior. And if I go to the first one here, you no longer get the hover behavior. So I think this is actually working better than the example site. So the example one, you can still, even if you're on the first page, it still lets you for some reason, and now this is getting very slow on the Hugo site for some reason. But when I go to this, you can still hover over this even though you're on the first page. So there's the logic there could be updated a little bit because you know you can't go further front than the first one. You can't go further back than the second one. So if you're on this page here, you should no longer see this there. So there's a little bit of updates that could be made there. That's fine. Um, I think ours looks pretty good in that sense. So I think this is this is looking pretty good. Now let's take a look at the last thing. So on the front page here, we had those links that could be updated. And if we come down here, you see we're no longer, oh, I guess we are still getting the underline. That's interesting. So let me take a look at this. Let's see what's going on with this link. Let's go back to our homepage and let's kill the JavaScript when we get there. Because this is, you can see this is really going slow again. I'm not really sure what's happening with this site. Um, yeah, let's stop it. Let's just kill the JavaScript. Maybe we can reload this page. Yeah, our example site is, something's happening with that. I don't know what kind of script is running on the front end, but it seems to keep crashing the site unless I disable the JavaScript. So I'm just trying to get that to work real quick. Okay. Okay, JavaScript's disabled and we're on the home page. Let's take a look at these links. I'm just gonna look at the style here. Now we have the button link and we have the color. And if I come over here, we have the button link. So we have a button, SCSS, okay. So we just wanna make sure we override this. So we have it something like this. Now this is 
a specific section. These are the, I think we might have called these image text blocks. So this is only appearing in those sections. So I think it's fair to do that directly in that uh, component. So we can come here and go to image text block. And at the bottom, we can add some style here. Style. And we're going to add this style here, which is an override for bootstrap. And we'll also come and we'll add the style above here where we actually get the color. Let's grab that. And let's put it in the same order as the example. Okay, so it'd be nice if we were doing this in a really like more design system oriented way, we'd probably pull out all these colors into CSS variables and we do this a little more robustly. Right now we're just kind of speckling in the styles and the overrides. It's not the most sustainable way to have a theme managed, but I think it'll work in this case right now just to get something working in the short term. So let's just make sure that is saved. And then let's come back over here and let's reload our example site. So we come here. Okay, so we're not getting the right color, but we're getting some of the other information. So let's take a look here what's happening. So we have this color. It's coming from our bundle. Oh, that's interesting. That color looks like it is that color. Oh, okay, so that's getting, that should be overridden. Let's just get rid of that directly there, save that, and let's come back here and reload this. Okay, so now we're getting the correct color. That looks pretty good. Now I think, you know, some kind of indication that we are clicking on this or hovering over this would be nice. So if we could have this just kind of shoot out a little bit. So let's take a look at this eye and we could put some kind of transition on this. And then we could just basically make that transition. We could do something like a padding left or something to actually push it out just a little bit. So we could come here and let's see if we have this information in here. So this is our I element. And we have our I element, okay. So we can actually grab this class here. We can come down and do something like this. And let's see here. Maybe we want to take a look and do a transition all. I guess we could just do one padding left. And we could say ease, oops, ease, and do like a 0.5 second transition, something like that. That might be okay. So let's just copy this and let's put this in here. And then let's do a hover on this, or let's grab this whole link actually. We actually want the link here. So our link is the button link. So if we do a button link hover, we want to get our class that we just did, our arrow right. We want that to have maybe a padding left of five pixels. I'm not sure if this is gonna look good at all, but let's just save this and see if that works at all. Let's come back here and let's just reload this page. So if I come down now and I hover over this, so you see that the, the arrow hops out a little bit to the right there. I'm not sure that looks amazing. Maybe the, the text needs to do something as well. Um, we could, I don't know, we could grow it or darken it or something, um, but that might look a little better. But yeah, you can at least get some kind of indication now that this is changing. So as I hover, you can see that it's, it's trying to do some kind of uh, notice that you are about to click on this. So at least that's working. Maybe we'll come back and we'll fix this later, but for now I think that's fine. And I think we can actually say that this theme is pretty much done. It has all the components here to make it a general working theme and uh, hopefully you've learned enough to actually go and create your own plenty of themes this way and i think it can be a pretty fast experience for building out different websites uh, with a dynamic front end and of course 
You can extend this even farther and make things even better, but I think this is a good example starting point for your projects. All right, thanks for watching this and stay tuned to our channel for more content like this in the future. All right, take care.